Okay, so in this video we're going to delve into a metabolism practice problem and then after each practice problem and throughout the practice problem you'll see that we're actually covering all of these phase one, phase two reactions. So at this point I recommend pausing the video and getting a uh, piece of paper where you can write all of the possible phase one reactions, all of the possible phase two reactions and that way throughout the video you can come back to this list and add on certain notes that we're going to be adding to these reactions uh, to this page right here. So this would be a good time to pause the video and prepare your list and so then you can go on with these practice problems. So starting, on, starting off with nafcillin, uh, whenever you see an aromatic group you're going to get uh, really familiar with aromatic hydroxylation. So I see a benzene group right here. I know that that can undergo phase one aromatic hydroxylation. So here we're going to see phase one metabolism and this is going to be aromatic hydroxylation and the name actually tells you exactly what's happening in this reaction. So you're starting off with an aromatic ring or a benzene ring as your substrate like we see here highlighted in yellow and then you're going to be adding a hydroxyl group or an OH group. And so you could rewrite this entire molecule uh, but all you're really going to be changing is on your aromatic ring you're going to be adding on an OH. So yes you can redraw it and you can draw but everything else in the structure is going to stay exactly the same because the only thing we've done is a phase one aromatic hydroxylation that is med mediated by CYP450 enzymes. Because remember with our phase one oxidation reactions they can be mediated with CYP450 enzymes or they can uh, be mediated with other enzymes that we talked about in the oxidation video such as alcohol dehydrogenase or aldehyde dehydrogenase for alcohol and um, for alcohol and aldehyde um, oxidation. So that's what I'm referencing there is alcohol and aldehyde dehydrogenation are non-CYP450 enzymes. But here we're just doing phase one aromatic hydroxylation. All you have to do is add on an AOH to your aromatic or benzene ring. And interestingly, when you add that OH, you're paving the way for phase two. So the theme kind of, of these next few videos is that phase one often paves the way for phase two. Because now that I've added this OH, or what Dr. Luo will reference as a handle, it's a handle because it's like the substrate or it's what's allowing for the next phase two reaction to occur. So you can go back to your phase two reactions and add this list right here. That glucoronidation can occur whenever you have an OH, a COOH, an NH2, or an SH. So whenever you see these groups, you can do glucoronidation. So what did we just do? After phase one aromatic hydroxylation in our practice problem, we now can do phase two glucoronidation. So now I can go ahead and redraw this entire structure just to show you that I'm going to add my, I'm going to show the glucoronidation of phase two conjugation reaction. And so what you can do is redraw this reaction, or this compound, excuse me. And when you're practicing problems, if you want, you can redraw the whole molecule or you can just redraw certain portions of the molecule so that you aren't wasting time just copying structures. So for example, at this point, I'm just gonna put R, R group, because at this point, nothing's changing, right? The rest of them, nothing's really changing in that part of the molecule, so why should I draw out the whole molecule? But what is changing is this bottom part here where I have my benzene ring, right? and I previously had that aromatic hydroxylation, that OH, but now I'm going to show that that OH actually has a glucornide group, and the glucornide group is actually really large, so what you'll see is you might just see glucornide, glu, glucornide uh, written out rather than seeing the full structure, but I'll show you what the full structure looks like after I just write like how we commonly refer to it as a uh, glucoronide, it's kind of hard to spell, but I believe that's how it is, glucoronide. 
And so now rather than the OH that we just had right here, we have a glucuronide group right there. O-glucuronide. If you remember from our very first video when we looked at phenytoin, the phase two reaction that occurred here was glucuronidation. And the phase one reaction was aromatic hydroxylation. So to the benzene ring, we added on an OH. And then that OH then, if you look here, so just look at this really carefully, uh, this oxygen is this over here. So now instead of an OH, we had an O giant group. So glucuronidation occurred, right? Glucuronide group was added. So rather, so the OH paved the way, so the aromatic hydroxylation phase one reaction paved the way for glucuronidation by putting on that OH group for us. So now that that OH group is on there, we know that glucuronidation can occur and this big large molecule is added. And just like I said, glucuronidation can occur whenever you have an OH, NH2, SO, S, sorry, COH or SH. In this case, we used OH. Okay, so that's one pathway where we did one phase two reaction uh, followed by a phase two reaction. So here I'm going to put phase two. It's mediated by, um, I'm going to put, sorry, phase two. And then I'm going to put glucuronidation because this is a conjugation that's actually happening with an endogenous molecule. So phase two glucuronidation. Sorry, that's not spelled correctly, but this is a phase two metabolism reaction that is glucuronidation. And this one you'll see over and over again. You'll see glucuronidation over and over again because it has such a diverse uh, number of um, substrates. So you could have OH, NH2, CH, COH, SH. All of that will allow for glucuronidation. So now we have glucuronidation. And so just to recap, all we've done is first we did a phase one reaction where we did aromatic hydroxylation. That was the first reaction we did, followed by which I did which I indicated by just adding on the hydroxyl group to the molecule instead of redrawing it. And then for phase two, I went ahead and redrew part of the molecule. And then so this arrow is showing going from um, this compound up here after we've done the aromatic hydroxylation uh, to this molecule where now we have added the glucuronide group, so we have undergone phase two glucuronidation. Okay. Now another pathway is that you can also under, uh, this molecule can also undergo O-dealkylation, O-dealkylation. So what I'm gonna do is erase this pathway and talk about a completely different pathway. So for O-dealkylation, it's exactly what it sounds like you have an oxygen and you're taking away an alkyl group. So it's O dealkylation, the removal of an alkyl group. So phase one reactions are really nice because the name of the reaction actually tells you exactly what the reaction is doing. So with O dealkylation, I see anytime I see a carbon oxygen bond, I can do O dealkylation. So I can uh, break or cleave this bond and remove this alkyl group, which I will highlight right here, this is the dealkylation, the removal of the alkyl group. And so when I do that, uh, I want you to think of this on the side if you want to add this to your notes, that when you have O dealkylation, let's say you have a carbon, uh, let's say you have a carbon that is attached to an oxygen, right? So I have a carbon, in this case, that's attached to an oxygen. So I'm going to put OR, and you can think of everything to the underneath this line as your R group, and then that oxygen is bonded to a alkyl group. So the bond that's really important here is this carbon-oxygen bond, this carbon-oxygen bond, and what's happening when I cleave this carbon-oxygen bond is that 
the carbon side, okay, the carbon side is going to get the addition of an OH. So again, the carbon side is going to get an addition of an OH. The oxygen side is going to get an addition of a hydrogen. So I'll highlight in yellow what was added. The carbon side got the addition of an OH. And the oxygen side got an addition of hydrogen. So after cleaving this bond, we added an OH to the carbon side, an H to the oxygen side, so H2O overall was added, and that oxygen-carbon bond was cleaved. Now, anytime you see this carbon-oxygen, you can't jump to the conclusion that you can have O dealkylation. Another thing you need to keep in mind is what we talked about in our oxidation video, which is that this carbon right here actually has to have at least one hydrogen present. So if there wasn't at least one hydrogen on this carbon, in this case this carbon has two hydrogens, uh, if it, there was not at least one hydrogen, then O dealkylation cannot occur because O dealkylation is under the broader umbrella of oxidation, and we cannot have oxidation if we if that carbon doesn't have any hydrogen to lose. So again, if that didn't make sense, go back and watch the uh, oxidation video, the oxidation overview video. And so this really helped me out to keep this in mind. In general, whenever I would see a carbon-oxygen bond, assuming that my carbon had at least one hydrogen, I would think, okay, I'm going to cleave this bond. The carbon is going to get the addition of an OH group, and the oxygen is going to get the addition of an 